Hey folks, it's JC the Sniper once again, and today I have a video um, a little bit relating to backpacking, camping, wilderness survival and stuff, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about a basic fire kit and what I like to carry in it. Um, and this right here is my fire kit bag, and I made this myself. Um, I do a little bit of leather work, so you've seen that perhaps with my... Uh, homemade concealed carry inside the waistband holster which I like uh, I've got a video that talks about that a little bit but uh, made this as well so this is my fire kit so we'll open it up here and get started a little bit um, first thing that I think is good to have in a fire starting kit is some cotton balls and this stuff is really cool because if you have dry cotton balls in your fire starting kit you can take this and just flake it out and then that'll catch a spark extremely easily so if you have a flint and steel you can spark that up right away and you've got a flame instantly so if you have just a handful of cotton balls squish it I mean you can crunch that up and stuff it in somewhere it's extremely light doesn't take up weight and as long as you keep it dry that'll start your fire right away. Um, I also carry a little bag in here and in here I keep several methods of starting a fire. Um, I usually keep two of these little Bic type lighters and uh, I've made a case for this one also out of leather just because these things are so darn breakable. Um, you know it's just easy for them to get punctured and stuff, so I am put a little, little leather case on it. It's just a cheapo big type lighter. But, uh, you know, if you have it and if it's working, that's a good way to start a fire. Um, you know, you can light that pretty easy and it'll start right away. Um, the other thing I keep is this hot spark. And uh, this is the Boy, Sp Boy Scout model since I am an Eagle Scout. Um, I've had this for years and I just rubber banded the pieces together because they had came on a, a little cheap lanyard and uh, the rubber band worked better for me. Um, but this is cool because it'll spark pretty good and it will always work. This will work in any environment um, anytime because you are the one operating it. You know, there's no flint to fall out, there's no, you know, gas thing to get punctured and depressurize and not work properly or anything like that. Um, if it's matches, you know, the matches don't get wet because this thing will, you know, it doesn't matter. If this is wet, it'll still strike. So, very reliable method of making fire. And if you have your cotton balls, very easy to make fire with it. Um, even if you don't have cotton balls, you can scrape some of the uh, inner bark from a cedar tree or there's just multiple different ways you can do that. Some punk wood perhaps and you can start a fire right up with this um, if you know the proper technique. And a lot of times I see people trying to use these things by hitting them with this. You don't do that. Place it on there, put this down in your tinder and then scrape firmly and it'll spark consistently and strongly. Um, don't whack on it. Terrible way to use it. Doesn't work. Um, and that's generally what I keep in here. Um, sometimes I also keep my cotton balls in here. And also matches, um, which are actually in my pouch because I didn't feel like getting them out of the other little pouch. Um, I carry some waterproof matches. And, you know, just a few. I think that's plenty right there. That's like 10 or 15 matches. I don't need a whole box. Um, and sometimes I'll even take them out of there and just carry them, you know, separately in maybe a little piece of a little, uh, plastic bag or a little match container, something like that. Um, these are waterproof matches, so um, that's a better option than your standard matches just because it's a little bit more reliable. So building reliability in your fire starting kit and also having several methods of making fire is important. You know, we've got number one easiest thing to use the lighter um, but along with the easiest to use it is also the easiest to fail this has more components it has more things going on because it's a method of making fire instantly so this could fail much easier 
So that fails. You move to your matches. Um, you know, they're a little bit not quite as convenient as this, but you strike them, you get a flame that lasts for a minute. So, you know, not quite as easy as a lighter, but not as prone to failure. However, even though they are waterproof matches, they can get soggy, especially in the stick part, and not burn well or very long. That may be difficult for you to start a fire with as well. Then we get our uh, hot spark, flint and steel, which will always work as long as you have this piece. You don't even need this. If you have this piece and a knife, you can start a fire. So, you know, we've got three tiers of fire starting things here. So I keep all these in my little pouch inside my booger pouch. And got my cotton balls for my um, tinder. So that's what we're going to start our spark in. And then I'll carry um, a few of these little fire starters. Um, these are basically, you know, just wood fiber, sawdust, and uh, wax. So sawdust, wax, compressed. And carry a few sticks of these and just, you know, use a little piece of it. And if you start some cotton balls, light this on fire, this will burn for, you know, several minutes and way long enough for you to get a fire started. You should be able to get a fire started just with this cotton ball if you've prepared properly. But in a wet environment, in a cold environment, this is easier to help you. And uh, because of the fact that it's wax impregnated, even if you get this wet, it won't soak up water. So that's kind of cool. Also, another option is punk wood. Um, if I find some punk wood along the trail, I'll usually cut it and take that with me. And that also functions very well. Of course, punk wood is wood from the base of a pine tree where the resin has soaked into it after the tree has died. And that stuff burns like crazy. It's awesome. Uh, if you ever find some out on the trail, you should uh, definitely cut it and try it. And you can tell the difference because it looks kind of funky and discolored and kind of cool, but it'll burn really nicely. So, also carry a few of those in my fire starting pouch. Um, also, I don't have it here right now, but I usually carry another little bag similar to this that I'll fill with um, uh, usually some some sort of natural fire starting stuff. Like um, I'll have some you know short little uh, you know pencil sized pieces of wood in there, and then some uh, you know cedar bark, um, inner bark from a cedar tree to help me start a fire in case I do encounter a situation where everything is soaked and I want to start a fire quickly, I can pull you know, my pouch out and then my little uh, tinder kindling bag and I have everything I need. Strike a fire with this or my cedar bark and then I've got these and a couple little sticks to get my fire going and then add some of the stuff that I found around. So it's just a little bit more efficient. Um, and also, one of my favorite fire starting things is the Zippo lighter. And Zippos are awesome, I think. Um, you know, you can get them however you want them. There's just a couple of the ones I've got. Um, but Zippos are cool because this thing is a lot more durable than this. You know, metal case. Also, no pressure to fail or anything. It's just a flint and steel and a wick and there's, you know, fuel inside. Of course, this can run out of fuel or you can lose it, but this is not very likely to get broken particularly if you keep it closed up. So this is a very durable way to start fire and very reliable. Um, windproof lighter, you know, it's just pretty sweet. And if you can keep an extra flint in the bottom like I do, and you have a, you know, a reasonably fresh wick in there, there's no reason for this to fail on the trail as long as you filled it up. Um, and also, if you do run out of fuel, you still have a flint here. I don't think this one you still have a flint here, so you can still take your cotton ball and stuff it in there and spark your cotton ball until it starts. So if you do run out of fuel or you have some other problem with your Zippo, as long as you've still got that flint wheel and that flint, which you should, you can start a fire. And I carry this on my body. Um, so this is on my side, this is on my body. That way I have two separate things with fire in them so that I'll never lose both of them. So anyway, 
few survival fire starting suggestions. JC the Sniper, out.